10 years of competition down the most harrowing and inhospitable terrain known to man. You can't help but be amazed by the historical feats that they have achieved over the years. But what happens when you take the biggest event in the history of the sport and you send it back to its roots? Freeride mountain biking begins anew with a blank canvas and returns to its origins. Man and bike simply versus the mountain. Welcome to the most progressive mountain bike competition in the world. An elite list of riders have come to Southern Utah to compete in one of the most awe-inspiring events ever in sports. This, my friends, is Rampage. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Hey everybody, Sal Masekela here, your host of the Red Bull Signature Series, and allow me to welcome you to Southern Utah, just outside of Zion National Park near the town of Virgin. Now, it is estimated that nearly four million tourists will visit this park in 2016, and it's really no wonder. The landscape here is simply breathtaking with its unique and stunning pink, red, and cream-colored cliffs and canyons. There's really no place that matches its pure natural beauty, thus drawing tourists from around the world. Now, the surrounding area draws a different kind of visitor, as this is the home to some of the very best mountain biking terrain on the planet. It is the mecca of the free ride mountain biking scene, and it is home to the biggest mountain biking event of the year, this being the 11th edition of something called Rampage. Riders and their diggers, this year limited to a crew only of two, have a blank slate to descend down. What would really be challenging for most of us to hike or to stand on, you'd be freaked out. But these competitors, they're made from some other stuff. They reach blazing speeds, performing the most progressive tricks, at times dropping off of 60-foot cliffs down a jagged and unforgiving mountain that really just wants to eat them. The man-made features of the past 10 competitions are just that, they're in the past. Rampage began as a big mountain free ride event in which riders utilized the natural terrain, and this year, it's going back to its roots. Only an elite handful of riders from around the world can compete here today that really have that stuff, and we're talking about legends, guys like Dan Bearclaw, Cameron Zink, Kurt Sorge, Kyle Strait, Graham Agassiz, Brandon Semenuk, and rising stars like Carson Storch. They're here because, again, they have what it takes to actually navigate down this mountain. We are all set for the finals. So we're going to check in with my guy, Todd Harris, and Mr. Cam McCall. Well, Sal, as we get set for the 11th edition of Red Bull Rampage, we're really going back to the history of the sport. Cam, it's all about the genesis of downhill mountain biking. You're right. It's full circle. It's kind of back to where Red Bull Rampage started. It's just the riders in the mountain and whatever materials they can find and build with their hands. So to see where this sport started in 2001 on a mellower slope, I mean, that mountain back there is the steepest mountain they've ever held this event on. And this is the first year that the riders and the building techniques and the bikes have caught up through this evolution and progression to where you can actually hold this contest on a hillside like that. Let's talk about the criteria that they'll be facing here in Virgin, Utah, and the judging panel. Yeah, the judging panel is, this is the first time they've ever had a judging panel comprised of athletes, riders who have competed in this event before. And I think that's very crucial. It's always a point of contention with this event, right. a lot of controversy. So hopefully we'll be able to remove that having a very, very qualified judging panel. All right, it's still a very dangerous course. For more on that, Tina Dixon taking her life in her own hands upon the course. Thanks guys, well hiking up here was very spectacular, but also extremely intimidating. You know, this is the steepest course they've ever had at Red Bull Rampage. Just take a look around me. It basically speaks for itself. In fact, if this were a ski mountain, much of this terrain wouldn't even be skiable. Yet these riders, they've made the impossible 
possible. Also, do not forget about the exposure. I peek over just a little bit and it is straight down. But these riders, they have spent countless hours. They've created their lines and they are ready to ride. All right, thank you, Tina. Be careful getting down from up there. Our first rider, Darren Bearclaw, in the start gate, actually instrumental in discovering this new venue. Now, before he drops in, let's take a closer look at what went into finding a location worthy of progressing a sport that's 15 years in the making. At the end of last year, it became very apparent how many lines are put into that mountain, how territorial everybody was about those lines, and that we needed a fresh start. So in February, me and a tall barber, we set out trying to find a new venue. What do you think of that zone up there? Green ridge there, that's pretty cliffy. They look good from afar and far from good when you get to them. Big desert, let's go hit it. The search is always the tough one, just because Utah in this area is so vast. There's a lot of ingredients you need to find something that actually has the ridges, that has the drops. Well, there's a lot of no-fall zones. Let's keep looking, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. It's pretty unique to find something that actually has that. Yeah, we looked at a lot of spots, and you know, we scoured days and days looking for the, the perfect site. There's some pretty sweet ridges up there. I think it's got all the elements. But as soon as we saw this one, we knew this was the one. I think this mountain is really the pinnacle of where this sport has been going. A lot of talk was let's go back to the roots this year and reset this whole event for the future. Moved away from having the organizers build a bunch of wood features. Just because Rampage is all about the natural terrain, using natural features and get out there with a the shovel and, and make it yourself and make it your own. So we're peeling it all the way back to its roots and see what happens. You know, this is 11 years in the making. All the evolution that's gone on in this sport is all leading up to this. So here we go, the first run of Red Bull Rampage. It'll be Darren Bearclaw's honor, young man from Parksville, British Columbia. And Cam, they get two runs, but this first one is critical. Yeah, absolutely, and I can't think of a better guy to kick off this competition. Darren Bearclaw probably has the most experience in the Southern Utah deserts than anybody out here. He's the oldest competitor in the field, and he's underway. So taking a very difficult line right here, riders left, very steep. Only three riders in the competition today are gonna opt into this line. Basically, the judges are looking at that line choice, They're looking at how fast you ride your bike down that line. Oh. The amplitude, just like that drop right there, a huge drop, took a lot of time with the build teams teaming up to be able to make that drop rideable. But opportunities for tricks like that jump right there, looks like he was looking for a trick, so judges the tricks is definitely the capper that the judges are hoping for on the air features of this run. GoPro taking us on board all day long. This is Darren Bearclaw of Canada with a huge drop. The biggest drop on his line. That thing's about 40 feet down and 40 feet out. Nice tabletop over the hip into another drop. Getting a oh. trick this time with that tuck no-hander. One last opportunity for a trick, and he 360s it. Man, what a great way to get this competition started. Fitting to have our veteran out here, getting this thing off on the right foot. Well, he may be the oldest in the field, but one of the very best. Darren Bearclaw makes it down to the bottom, and that will be critical today because it is such a treacherous course. Well, we'll see what the judges have to say about this. They're gonna love the line choice because there's only a couple guys going here. That drop right there, the green monster, definitely going to be weighing heavy on the judges' scorecards. They get two runs. They're gonna be scored out of 100. So right now, Darren Bearclaw setting the precedent. Everybody's gonna be up at the top of the course, excited to drop in after seeing him make it top to bottom. So Darren waiting for the score to come in. It's a 70.66, his girlfriend Bree on hand. He sets the mark to beat now here at Rampage. Great opening score, two runs. We only keep your best. He's with Tina. Thanks, Todd. And the first rider to drop down here, you know, Claw, there was so much anticipation. You could feel it down here. And I think a lot of uh, people's hearts were racing pretty fast. What was it like for you up top? Yeah, being the uh, first athlete's never a fun time. It's always uh, a little nerve wracking. And to be honest, the wind is horrible right now, which is, uh, if you guys know me, you know me that uh, I hate the wind. So that's definitely another thing to deal with. But uh, I made it down. Everything was good. I'm stoked. You know, you were really instrumental in choosing this location and going back to 2002 where you actually podium. How do you compare the courses? Well, you know, it's a whole nother ball game now. Like we've all learned how to build jumps and all sorts of features out here in this kind of landscape. And uh, yeah, everything's just changed. The level keeps going and brought up and up every year. And uh, yeah, the boys just keep bringing it. Yeah, well, what a start. Congrats, guys. 
Thank you, Tina. We've got Tyler McCall's first of two runs up next when we return to Rampage from beautiful Virgin, Utah. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to Virgin, Utah. This is the Red Bull Signature Series, and you're watching Rampage. Todd Harris alongside Cam McCall and his younger brother, Tyler McCall, the 27-year-old version of the McCall brothers, ready to drop in on run number one, and he has got a very, very difficult line, Cam. Well, I'll tell you, I'm on pins and needles right now, Todd, for that very reason. The line is very difficult. It's the same line we just saw Darren Bearcloth drop into. They teamed up with a very elite list of athletes invited into the event this year. There's less diggers and less invited athletes, so it's imperative that they team up. So Ooh. Tyler McCall and Darren Bearcloth, they tackled this line right here. We're gonna see how Tyler can ride it a little bit different than Darren. Look at the exposure there, Todd. That POV view really gives you the feel of what it's like to be on that ridge, only three feet wide with 100 foot exposure on either side. So an opportunity for a trick here. He gets nice. a backflip on the top of the ridge. Now the judges love it when you put a trick in up at the top of the run in the exposed areas. Now coming into the biggest feature on this line and stomping nice. it clean, so big and a very extended Superman can-can topside on that left hand down hip. Smooth over the step down, one last opportunity for a trick here, what's it gonna be? A corked out backflip mm. going dead flat on that landing. Man, it seems like he just dropped in. That run was pinned top to bottom. So Tyler McCall with a great opening run, two runs, we keep your best score. Right now, Darren Bearclaw has the mark to beat at 70.66, but we may have a new leader after this one. Well, like we talked about at the beginning of the show, this drop right here, the Green Goblin, was so difficult to build. You can see about 300 sandbags in there. Each rider gets a handful of them, and they teamed up, put them together, and that drop right there, 40 feet down, 40 feet out, but to get the extension on that Superman can-can in the middle of your run, I feel like you need a lot of focus to do that. So dropping second and putting it strong top to bottom, let's see what he can do in run two. So the 27-year-old from Aptos, California does indeed go into first place. Tyler McCall leads at Rampage with a score of 76 and one more run still to go. Back to the top of the course, this is Carson Stortz, the 23-year-old from your hometown of Bend, Oregon. And you can get an idea of just how windy it is. Look at his shirt. Yeah, you know, riding down this stuff in calm conditions is scary enough, but to drop in, do the best run of your life with tricks and exposed areas in the wind, these guys are on another level. So I know Carson Storch has big plans here, some trickable features on this run, starting out pretty similar to where we saw Bearcloth and Tyler McCall go. He has his own variation coming up on the middle of the ridge, but before he gets there, he's got to tackle this big exposed drop. Making it look smooth. Now this kid comes from slope style, and you don't expect to see a lot of slope style athletes out here, only the most well-rounded ones. So Carson Storch showing that he is no stranger to big train on a downhill bike. A nice nose bonk on that feature. That's a great example of control and style. The judges love that, but here's where he's got to throw in some tricks. A 360, nice. wow! That is a huge drop. So difficult to judge the timing for the rotation and the speed coming into that drop. Probably one of the biggest 360 drops we've seen in Rampage and Carson Storch. It's time to start looking at him as a free rider, not just a slope style athlete. Coming down that upper section a little slower than your brother did, but wow, certainly making up for it for the bottom third. That flat spin 360 to cap things off. A very eventful run for Carson Storch. The judges are gonna love it, Todd. The 23-year-old out of Bend, Oregon, Carson Storch into the finish corral with flair. There is no better feeling than showing up to that finish corral. You're so scared at the top, and to put it all together like that with tricks, he's on cloud nine right now. So let's take a look back up at the top. You have to manage these very technical features before you can even get to the ones where you can throw the tricks in. And putting in the style too, like we said before, that's one of the judges' criteria. The line choice, the tricks, but also the style and fluidity. So just take a look at how tall that drop is. I mean, that's like five or six Carsons tall right there. So probably, you know, on the 10 meter range there, looking at 30 feet plus, and then the style on this hip, man, reminiscent of what it looks like when you're watching a Supercross race. 
And then two 360s in this run, showing variety because he's doing it on two different features, one on a drop and one on a jump, but very, very smooth execution. So Carson Storch with a fantastic run. Mark to beat was a 76, thrown up by Tyler McCall. And Carson Storch goes into the lead with a 79 on his first run. Here's Tina Dixon. Well, Carson, let's talk about that 360 leading up to it and then just stomping it with precision. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of anticipation going into that, and uh, it was a huge build. Took us most of the time to build that drop, and uh, yeah, it feels amazing to pull off what I wanted to do the whole time and get down to the bottom safe, and yeah, it was a fun ride. Well, not only was it a huge build, I mean, there wasn't even anything there. It was so narrow, and you created a run pretty much out of nothing. Yeah, my diggers really killed it. They definitely slaved away and built a huge rock wall. It took a lot of work, and uh, yeah, turned out really good, and I'm stoked to pull it. Yeah, what a great first run. Thanks, Carson. Thank you. All right, guys. Tina, an impressive run for Carson, but we've got many more top riders to come, like this guy, last year's third place finisher, Graham Agassi. And we return to awe inspiring Utah, home to more than just spectacular deserts and mountains. Utah has some of the most beautiful lakes and rivers in the country, as well as wildlife viewing that is second to none. Utah, it truly has it all. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. This is Rampage. From Virgin, Utah, we move back to the top of the course. 26-year-old Graham Agassi of Kamloops, British Columbia, set to drop in. Well, it's exciting seeing this guy at the top of the course. This is the guy you'd expect to win every year, but somehow he hasn't done it yet, but he got a podium last year. He's on an upward trajectory, and you know, this could be his year. He's got one of the most technical lines on the hill. You see him starting out where the first three riders did, but making this abrupt, 180 degree right hand corner. He's dropping into the belly of the beast right now. Wow, Todd, look how Carried steep that a ton is. Of speed. Straight down the gut of this mountain. Oh. And somehow modulating his speed to connect right to the top of the landing on that step up. Now this is the part of the run I'm excited to see. This is where Graham Agassi is gonna put his style on display. This is basically a rhythm section where he's linking all of these hip jumps in order. Let's see if he throws any tricks in. Nice at the top of the landing of that big one, and a backflip on that left hip. One humongous drop to go. And he 360s it. Oh, oh, no. And Agassi off his line, and he goes down hard. Well, good to see him moving around, but that was a really hard hit. He didn't even touch that landing. Let's take a look back at the replay. Obviously, things were going great for him at the start. The most technical line on the entire mountain, and you can really tell how fast he's going on that pitch, which is more than 45 degrees steep. And then somehow, adjusting his speed just perfectly to land at the top of the landing on that step up. And this style, I mean, this is the kind of bike handling precision that put him on the third spot last year, standing on that podium with those tabletops, those whips, and extending those arms like only Graham Agassi can do. And this flip right here, I can't stress enough how tech it is because it's a hip, but right here, this 360 drop, he pops nice, his rotation is smooth, but he completely misses the landing. He knows right here. Watch Ooh. his back tire hung up on that rock. Wow, and the next thing to hit was his face and he didn't get to tumble down the smooth. <sighs> Man, that was a rough one for Graham. So Graham Agassi being attended to by the best medical staff on the mountain as fellow athletes and fans look on. He certainly is a fan favorite here at Rampage. Brandon Semenik deeply concerned. We'll have more when we return to the Red Bull Signature Series. This is the Red Bull Signature Series and you're watching Rampage from Virgin, Utah. Just moments ago, Graham Agassi, the Canadian, halfway through his run, just ragdolls down the hill. And Cam, this is something that's part of the sport. You never want to see this, though. It is. We all know that it's a possibility, but it's great to see Graham right there signaling to the fans that he appreciates them cheering for him. A rough go for Graham right there, but wishing him all the best. So Graham Agassi on his way to seek further medical attention, and the fans here just stunned. As we said, a fan favorite, certainly Graham Agassi, and his day is done. And now for the rest of the competitors, Cam McCall, you've been in this situation before, you gotta continue on. Well, it's hard enough to be up at the top of the course under any circumstances, but when you see your fr your close friend and competitor go down, it really makes you watch those, those flags a little bit closer because usually that has some part into uh, why a big crash takes place out here in the middle of the desert. 
And this is Brandon Semenuk. Last time we saw him was at Joyride, where he was absolutely beside himself, not able to get the victory, but now an opportunity for redemption. And this kid is a careful craftsman when it comes to Rampage runs. He won it at the ripe age of 17 in 2008, and he hasn't been able to repeat on that win yet, but the run that he and his build crew have put together here definitely has potential to do it if he can put all the pieces of the puzzle together. Look at that, modulating his speed into that double drop. Very technical. Don't be fooled by how smooth he's riding right now. This is one of the most technical lines on the hill. Little nose bonk off the drop. Watch how those tires barely have traction on the ground in between features. Right now, getting a lot of speed for a huge trick jump. Oh, a flat spin 360 right to the top of that landing. Look at that trail of dust falling down the hill, Todd. All right, what's he got here? A flat oh. drop flip hipping off the side of that lily pad feature. So technical, not only where he's putting his tires, but the tricks he's doing once those tires get off the ground. Well, he's got one more opportunity for another trick here. Let's see what he does. A backflip oh. one-footed can-can, getting the combination like only Brandon Semina can do. Wow, that was a really action-packed run. Pretty much hitting all those points that we talked about for judging criteria. And coming on the heels of watching his good friend Graham Agassi go down, Brandon Seminuk absolutely nails it. Remember, the mark to beat is a 79. Brandon Seminuk on run number one crushed it. So let's take a look back at the top. This double drop right here is so incredibly technical. Watch his back tire. When it's touching down, he's full on the rear brakes because he's gonna be in the air again soon. But doing a nose bonk off a drop like that, as soon as you think, wow, maybe he's out of control, he does something like that. And then this 360 definitely was a huge highlight of the run and a very unique feature. Brandon Semenuk is known for finding these unique features and then dropping a trick on there that you would not expect. Case in point right here, this lily pad drop. Nobody expected him to flip off of that because there's not a kicker. But this morning in practice, he was warming up on that and the backflip one-footed can to cap things off. Judges are gonna love it, Todd. Can't wait to see what number they assign to this one. With the flags flying in the background, you can see just how windy it is. And the score for Brandon Semenuk, an 84-3-3. So he does, in fact, go into the lead on run number one. And he's standing by with Tina. Thanks, Todd. Just a little bit of everything. You had the drops, it was fast, and then you added the tricks. Walk us through it. Yeah, exactly what I was going for, to kind of make a really versatile line, show all my skills. Some fast bits, some slow bits, steep bits, technical bits, and then obviously add them to the trick. So that worked out great. I'm, I'm so pumped to get it running. You know, you had the delay up there after watching Aggie go down. How do you get yourself mentally prepared to take a run? Watching my buddy Aggie go down is like, oh, I was like pretty stoked right before that and watching that just kind of as a, a morale killer. So, but uh, I mean, hopefully it's all good. And I just kind of had to get it. Get, to get in that mindset again and just be ready to drop in. Yeah, and you had that great first run top to bottom with the tricks. Thanks, Brandon. So the mark is 84.33. Brandon Semenuk, your leader, as we go to the top of the course. And there you see the wind picking up. Antoine Bazette of France, the 24-year-old out of Versailles. And he's going to put this on a little bit of a hold. Well, he's smart. He had a really rough go of it last year, and he's been recovering ever since. So even though Brandon just dropped that run and it was perfect, you got to watch those flags and make sure you're dropping in under as safe of conditions as possible. Well, he had a winning run last year in 2015, and this young man is so talented. But again, win was a little bit of a factor, and here he was on his second run. He's been on the podium before years ago, so last year he wanted that top spot, and he was doing everything possible to get there. He had a front flip up top, he back flipped the canyon gap, and then to cap things off, he's had this dream of double back flipping in Rampage for three years now. Last year, it did not go his way, and that's the crash that caused him that injury that kept him off the bike for the last eight months. Broken left arm for him, and his day was done on that double back flip. Well, you can see him signaling to the camera right now that it's too windy, he doesn't want to drop in. A new addition to the format this year, if you're not feeling the conditions, you can opt to go to the back of the line and let the next guy go and pick up your run later when the conditions improve. Well, the Red Bull Signature Series will be right back with Rampage here in Virgin, Utah. And as you can see by the parking lot here in Utah, it is home to a massive mountain bike community. It truly has world-class riding for all levels, from beginners to the experts standing in the start gate today. If you love two wheels, Utah is the place for you. 
Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. This is Rampage. From beautiful Virgin, Utah, Todd Harris, Cam McCall, and Tina Dixon and Cam, wins still a factor for these athletes, especially at the top of the course. Yeah, Bizet deciding to go to the back of the line, so that puts us in a pretty interesting situation right now. The next rider to drop kind of has to sit there and go, well, it was too windy for Bizet, but do I have the guts to drop in right now? And that next rider is Thomas Janon from Belgium. The 23-year-old set to go looking down the course. You see the wind still fluttering up at the top, and he's deciding it's now. Wow, for a kid with a slope style background from Belgium where there isn't mountains right now, deciding that he's gonna drop in in these conditions, so impressive, showing that not only does he have skill on the bike, but he's got the mental game as well, Todd. And he is carrying a very fast line, one of the criteria that the judges are looking at, and these are all X riders the judges that we have today in Virgin. Yeah, it's really great having a judging panel made of all former athletes in the competition. So they really know what they're looking for. And right now they're looking for that classic Thomas Janon style and he is delivering, going down the middle ridge, connecting basically a rhythm section right now. And let's see if he can throw in some tricks. We know him for his slope style abilities. There it is right there, a 360 drop on the full on downhill bike with 27.5 wheels. Oh. This guy's very well rounded. Full commitment by Thomas Janone halfway through the course and carrying a ton of speed. One last opportunity for a trick. Whoa, a massive inverted flat spin 360 table. The style on that table. I feel like I'm watching a slope style contest right now, but we're in the mountains on a downhill bike. Not too many people in the world who can do what he just did. The mark to beat is an 84-3-3 put up by Canada's Brandon Seminuk. Now, I can't stress enough, the fact that this guy is from Belgium and he's adapted his bicycle skills to this environment and doing tricks like this flat spin 360 table, making it look like he's on a tiny little slope style bike, but he's on a big downhill bike in the mountains. I can't believe he was able to hone his skills in Belgium. So Thomas Janone on run number one gets a 77.66. That will slot him into third place currently with one more run to go as we make our way back to the top of the precarious perch, which is the start line. And that is 29-year-old Kyle Strait talking things over with Cam Zink. And both of them obviously talking about the win and what they're going to be facing here in a moment. Yeah, you know, they're a team. They always do this. They like the dynamic duo. So they team up on their line, but they also communicate beta and information about the conditions together to try to ensure that they both have all the information in the head game ready to stomp their line. Kyle Strait, a two-time winner, won it in 04 and in 13, and he has competed in all 11 Rampage events. And look at this line. So this guy, he obviously has so much skill on two wheels, but he's been able to win this thing twice, like you said, and this game has changed so much between his first win and his second win. So he has the ability to be a chameleon and adapt to the progression of the sport. So can he do it for a third time? He's got a great line set in front of him right now that he and Cam Zink built. Can't wait to see what tricks he puts into it. Look at all the speed and fluidity. A canyon gap setting up to the biggest drop on his line right now. Puts it down right at the top, almost really far to the side right there too. But I saw Cam Zink shaping up a lip from here last night and Kyle Strait backflips it, taking himself outside his comfort zone with some style over that hip. Wow, really proud of Kyle Strait right now for going for that step down backflip. And the two time champion brings it home. The 29 year old out of Alpine, California with an amazing run. Look at his fiance Rachel right there just over the moon. That's only the second time he's flipped a step down and he did it in the competition run here at Rampage. Yeah! <laughs> Let's take a look back. We're on board right now with his POV camera. Look how exposed it is to the left there, but with the precision we come to expect from Kyle Strait, putting the tires down right at the top of that transition, almost a bit far to the right. As you see, he didn't have much breathing room there, did he? But this is what it was all about right here, this step down backflip. He's only done a step down backflip on a downhill bike one time. It was a couple of years ago in a film shoot. So I'm pretty excited that he was able to pull the trigger on it here at Rampage. And the score for Kyle Strait, 78-3-3. That has him into third place, a podium position. And he's standing by with Tina. Thanks, guys. And Kyle getting that step down flip, the first one ever in a Rampage competition. When did that come into play? Uh, you know, I, 
I guess you just need to step it up every once in a while, and it's been a couple of years, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked to finally get one of those done and I guess step up to the, the big leagues, I guess you could say. But anyway, I'm, I'm stoked. The, uh, we were super worried about the wind at the top, but it ended up being not too bad. I was a little bit off on a couple of my lines, but other than that, just so pumped to get down safely and hope we can get another run in because I can really step it up. What a run. Thanks, Kyle. Guys. Thank you, Tina. Well, much to the excitement of his dad and the rest of the fans here, Kyle moves into third place. We've got his good friend Cam Zink up next when we return to Rampage, part of the Red Bull Signature Series here in stunning Utah, where there's plenty of fun to be had even if you don't feel like taking your life in your own hands. Utah's always been famous for its scenery, its national parks, and the diversity of its unique regions. Playing golf in Utah is no different. Utah is an absolute must on any golfer's list. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. You are watching Rampage, and I am your host, Sal Masichella. The battle to get a top-to-bottom run here at Rampage begins long before you enter the start gate. With Rampage occurring at the end of the competition season, riders have to stay healthy in their respective disciplines just to make it to this event. Now, for downhill racer Brandon Fairclaw, he has an entire season made up of 12 stops, racing the fastest riders in the world just so he can make it to Southern Utah. Now, the courses are set for him in downhill, but here at Rampage, there's one final hurdle before your competition run, and that's building and testing your own line to make sure you can survive it and bring home that winning run. Now, this is a major challenge for all the riders, but especially so for Brandon Fairclaw, as he has an unhealthy obsession with canyon gaps. I'm a racer, that's why um, I love riding bikes, is to race and try to beat the other guys down the hill. So I guess this is beating the other guys down the hill, but Whoa. a slightly different way. And hey, when are you ever going to get the chance to come out in here and dig out here for 10 days? Turning up with just a blank mountain is pretty daunting. Sick. Hey, look, we run it down that ridge and then and over that big gap. Whether that's feasible or not, I'm not sure. That canyon looks big, though. Deep. So yeah, it's my fourth rampage. Seems like we've had a bit of an obsession with some canyon gaps. Brandon really loves these canyon jumps. Tried to get away from it this year, but uh, found this little beauty and we couldn't resist. So uh, here she is, all 50 foot of her. This one's going to make it. That's part of the thing, you know, you build it, then you have to test it. And that's kind of the bit that no one really sees behind the scenes. You're sciencing out in your head and you've got your experience and your digger's experience, but at the end of the day, there's no measurements, there's no speed guns and no anything, you know, you've got to just use your feeling and, and hope that you um, don't screw it up. Oh, oh. It just looks like you catapulted into the back, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, like when I didn't I didn't want to you didn't want to chuck it there. <laughs> I came to a stop and I thought I was good. My legs were still on and my arms were still on. And then I went to go take my goggles off. And my thumb just like wrenched back. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Wrist thing and ended yeah. with uh, these two things. Pretty much ended my uh, ended my rampage um, hopes. In hindsight, probably didn't have enough speed. Well, you can see right there from that feature, it's an arduous process getting ready for rampage. The training you do at home, the building you do here, and then the test runs, it's really hard to get to game day in one piece. Cameron Zink, the 30-year-old out of Reno, Nevada, has done just that. He is set to drop in on run number one. This guy is so creative. You talked about him working with Kyle Strait, one of the most innovative riders we have at this competition. How cool to hear. His little daughter, Ayla, cheering him on down there at the bottom. Cam Zink has had his highs and lows with this event. When Amanda was pregnant with Ayla just a few years ago, he did the biggest step down backflip in the history. Yep. Now his little daughter's cheering him on. So great to see. So Cam Zink on course, typical, a lot of speed to start. A more technical variation at the start of that, that very first drop, he actually had two drops in there. He's the only guy we've seen so far riding that variation, rider's left of that rider's right ridge. Now he's gonna follow the same path that we saw Kyle straight ride just now. They teamed up together on this line. So expect to see some style on these linked features right here. Now across the canyon gap into the biggest drop on the line. What's he got for us? A 360. 360. Oh, he over rotates and goes down. And he walks right out of it. Are you kidding me? What an animal. This guy 
is just as good at crashing as he is at riding, and that's what you need to do if you're a mountain biker. Being greeted by Amanda and Ayla right there in <laughs> one piece. How in the world did he get out of that unscathed? So here's that feature right here that I was talking about, this double drop at the beginning. See, he's a little bit farther to the right of your screen and he airs again right there. A subtle difference, but that's the kind of stuff the judges are looking for. Now onto the rhythm section of his line, making his way over to that big drop. And if you know Cam Zink, you had to imagine he had something up his sleeve here. The last two years, he's had humongous dirt to dirt 360 drops. This one is on par with the size, what we've seen in the past, but this time coming about 450 when he was aiming for 360, mm. a nice tuck and roll. That's a product of years and years and years of going down and figuring out how to roll out of it. And just stands up and walks right out of it. So the champion in 2010, Cam Zink up on his feet, to greet his wife and daughter at Mid Mountain. He'll get a DNF on run number one, but he does have a second run. And remember, it's only your best run that counts, but he looks like he's pretty well banged up. Well, it looks like he's feeling his thumb right there. And if I know Cam Zink, he'll do whatever it takes to get up there for a second run, but you gotta be realistic too if you can't hold on to your handlebars. As it stands right now, Brandon Semenuk is the leader as we check in with Sal Masakela. Thank you, Todd. Can Brandon Semenik join the exclusive two-win club? Are we gonna have a new first-time winner this year? What do you guys think about the new venue? How about the changes to the format and course and the event returning to its big mountain roots without the addition of man-made features? Now in its 11th year of competition, clearly there's plenty to talk about, so how about you get involved in our conversation? Follow the Red Bull Signature Series on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, any way you get down socially, the hashtag is Red Bull Rampage, or you can go to RedBullSignatureSeries.com where we have even more exclusive content for you about this and upcoming events and our schedule for the entire year. Plus, you can also download the Red Bull TV app to watch this show and every episode from all seasons. You're welcome. Plenty more when we return. You are watching Rampage from Southern Utah. This is the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. I'm your host, Sal Masekela, and this is Rampage. This competition is not only about intimidating mountains and death-defying tricks. More than anything, it's about confidence. No one rider has personified this more than Kurt Sorge. He won in 2012, then he was sidelined with injury in both 2013 and 2014. During that time, with Rampage as his primary means of exposure to a broad audience of fans, Sorgi was dropped by his major sponsors as they lost confidence in him. However, 2015, he returns healthy again, nearly forgotten by the freeride mountain biking scene. But an electrifying first run quickly jogged everyone's memory and put him on top of the podium. For the second time, only the second rider to accomplish this feat. This year, all eyes are on him again. Sorgi's got the target of defending champ on his back. Can he defend his title? Yeah, it's pretty crazy, like, the whole story, really. Come back after two years not riding, like, technically it's a back-to-back -back win. In 2012, ended up winning the event, and, you know, it was pretty much a childhood dream come true. Going into 2013, I was robbed of defending my title due to an injury, and bad luck struck again, pretty much, for like, a year from when I broke my leg. The year before, I did it again. For two years of not riding Rampage, a lot of people started to question, like, can you still do it? After losing a lot of support after my two injuries, I felt like I had something to prove going into Rampage last year. Now, Kurt Sorge returning after two years of injury. All of that just fueled his fire, and then he just came back even stronger. Sorge, last time he dropped in, he won, so he's trying to defend that title. Maybe some people are doubting me, but I really never doubted myself. And uh, yeah, it felt amazing to be back on top of the box. The confidence that goes in to do all of that was just phenomenal. I don't understand how he has that in his brain, like just to be able to like flick that switch and just do it. This year now I have the chance to repeat win and you just gotta show up confident and put the work in. Hopefully you've prepared enough and you know what you're supposed to do and you just have to go do it. How about that? Such a testament 
to the tenacity of this individual right here, always having confidence in himself when maybe some other people were starting to waver a little bit. This guy has the opportunity to possibly be the first three-time winner right here right now. He is the defending champion, 27-year-old Kurt Sorge on course. Here we go, Kurt Sorge. Now, he teamed up with Graham Agassi for the middle and the bottom of that line. We saw Graham Agassi go down real hard earlier. How is that going to be affecting Kurt right now, seeing his good buddy go down? He's on Ryder's right ridge, so he's about ready to link up to where Graham Agassi connected from that very middle line right there. But you got to believe he's going to be finishing with that huge drop where Aggie crashed. Two-time champion Kurt Sorge carrying a ton of speed on that ridge line. Here we go. And I love this rhythm section. Two guys who you just love flow through some hips. Graham Agassi and Kurt Sorge, but the big drop coming up. What's he going to do? Sorge with the straight air, but he hits the landing. You can see that landing is a bit offset from the takeoff, so it's not easy to put your tires down right in the middle, but he does it. And a big backflip hit on the final feature of the course. Great way to finish the run here for Kurt Sorge. Pushing through the stress of seeing your buddy go down, that just adds to the excitement of getting to the finish corral here for Sorge. So the defending champion drops his bike, hands in the air. The mark to be 84.33, put up by fellow Canadian Brandon Semenuk. So even though he's probably sitting there feeling a little uneasy after watching his buddy go down, he still managed to, to dig down and summon the style that we know Sorge for. He's won this event twice, like we mentioned before. And all these whips and tables are what helped him do it in the past. But coming into that final drop, I was biting my fingernails, hoping he wasn't going to try to 360 it too. But playing it safe, looks like he was maybe thinking about pinching his seat, going for a trick. But with the wind and the offset nature of that landing, you can see just getting to the corner of that thing and stomping it smooth. He will get big points because that's one of the biggest features out here. Obviously, he needed a trick, so he knew the bottom of the course was the spot to do it. And flipping that hip, very technical to get the bike on the angle it needed to be to land it smooth. Well, the judges crunching their numbers, and these guys are all former athletes. They've competed in this event before, so they know what these guys are going through. Half of the field competed last year, so they definitely, it's fresh in their mind. They know what they're looking for, like you said. 84-3-3, the mark to beat. That put down by Brandon Semenuk. And for Kurt Sorge, it's going to be a 78.66 on run one. That has him currently sitting in third place. And he's standing by with Tina Dixon. Guys, yeah, the judges definitely took their time with your score as you waited down here. You're the defending champion. What is it about Red Bull Rampage that just keeps calling your name? Oh, that's a good question, actually. Uh, I think it's just coming out and being with all the guys and being part of it. And it's kind of my favorite part. It's definitely even got really gnarly this year, like it always is. But uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I guess it's a good personal challenge. And I just love to come hang out with the boys. You know, you and Graham worked really closely on the line and you shared that similar drop. How much was that playing in your mind and, and how did what did you tell yourself there? Yeah, it was pretty pretty tough seeing Aggie go down, but uh, yeah, uh, we, we tested it out yesterday and um, yeah, I just knew what I needed to do and just hope he's all right. Yeah, as we all do. Thanks so much, Kurt. Guys. All right, thank you, Tina. Kurt Sorge looking to run number two. We go back to the top of the course. This is Antoine Bazet of France. Remember, he took a pass because he didn't like the wind conditions. So here he is, the final rider of run number one. And we're about to find out if that decision to go to the back of the line is going to be a good one. If the flags are waving a little bit less now than they were before, then it was worth the wait. Let's see how it shakes down. Antoine Bazet. Yeah, he comes from France, but this guy loves big mountain free riding so much. He spends more time here in Virgin than virtually any of the other competitors. So even though he's from, you know, a continent away, he's kind of one of the most well-versed riders in this type of terrain. And Cam, you look at the course as we go on board with the Z. It looks like it's holding up really well, but you talk about the temperatures we've had, very little rain in the course. Oh, and a huge backflip. The course is holding up with a lot of powdery, soft dirt. That's true. So you wait until the end of the day, and it may just become more and more dusty. But it does not seem to be hurting Antoine Bazet right now. We saw that big step down flip on the middle of the ridge with that rhythm section. What does he have here? There it is, the double backflip. And he lands it. The first time in Red Bull Rampage history where a double backflip has landed in the context of a competition run. That's history right there, Todd.
certainly worth the wait for Antoine Bazet. Not only a terrific run, but the double. Well, this run kind of had it all. Yeah, he's dropping into the middle ridge, which sometimes in the past doesn't score as high as some of the more creative lines on the sides of the ridges, but he's tricking in a very crux area on that ridge with exposure on either side, but it's all about this double backflip at the bottom after eight months off the bike and a three-year quest with the goal of doing a double backflip in a Rampage oh. competition run. It all came to fruition here, and he's got to just be so pumped. So Antoine with a tremendous run here on run number one. He gets an 81, goes into second place, and he's standing by with Tina. Well, I think the smile on his face says it all. That double backflip in 2015, you had the run going up until then. How redeeming is it to land it now? It feels super good. Like last year has been a big deal for me. I've been injured for eight months before I get back on my bike from this injury. That's the biggest injury I ever had. So I showed up here and I was in a totally different mindset than everyone, like uh, any competitor would be. Like I was there, okay, I, I do it. If, if the conditions are good, I know uh, double flip, I can do it. I've been training for it and just been waiting for the perfect conditions and now I got it. Didn't got it perfect though, I over a bit because I wasn't sure about the speed this morning. It's been changing from this morning to the days before. But I'm super stoked I landed it and that's... Ranking is just option, you know, but just I, I nailed the run at Rampage again and that fits super good. Uh, congratulations, the crowd was cheering for you down here. Thanks, Antoine, guys. And what a run by Bazette as we have wrapped up the first of two as we take a look at the leaderboard. Kyle Strait sits in fifth, the defending champion Kurt Sorge currently in fourth, Carson Storch in third, and Antoine Bazette by way of that double sits in second, and Brandon Semenuk, 84-33, leads the way with one run to go. So Cam, what do you expect in run number two here in Virgin, Utah? Well, you can look at these scores and you can understand what the judges are thinking. They're expecting big things for run number two, capping out at only that 84 mark for Brandon Semenuk. Big expectations for run number two coming from these athletes. Let's see if they can top him. This is Rampage, and you're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to Virgin, Utah. This is the Red Bull Signature Series, and you're watching Rampage. Todd Harris alongside Cam McCall as we get set for run number two. If you're with us earlier in the broadcast, you saw the hard fall by Graham Agassi. He was taken to a local hospital for more on his condition. Let's check in with Tina. Thanks, Todd. Yes, we just got word that Graham Agassi did sustain a hip fracture. The good news is he's stable. He is talking and is being treated at a local hospital. Now, everyone here, riders, fans, we all wish Graham Agassi a speedy recovery. Uh, it's tough to see a buddy go down, but it's good when you get the news that he's in stable condition. So hopefully that's going to help these guys out in their headspace right now for run number two. Carson Stortz set to go. Before we do that, let's recap what happened earlier in some of the run number twos while we're away. Darren Bearclaw sitting on a 70.66, and then this happened. Well, we've been talking about the wind today, and we can see the effects of that wind right there. You see he got off balance on that gigantic drop on that exposed area, had to take a foot off, and then bit by the wind again right here on that narrow section of the trail, getting blown off. Luckily, not on a very crux part of the course. He's able to walk away, just not able to finish that run. So he's stuck with a 70.66. Your younger brother, Tyler McCall, had a great first run with a 76 solid. His second run didn't go quite as well. Only a couple small opportunities to improve on his first run. And uh, he wanted to get a big trick on that big step down, but coming up short on one of the Setup features allowed him no speed for that final trick jump, so he's going to go with his run one score as well. So Tyler McCall sits with a 76, and we are back on top of the course. Carson Storch, 23 years of age, his first run was a 79. Now, with the judges being very persickety and not handing out a lot of points, what does he have to do to surpass Brandon Semenuk's 84-33? Well, I can't even imagine how he's going to improve on that first run. He had that massive 360 drop, so if he wants to improve, he's going to have to do that again and then hopefully add something else in there. He rode the top section very smooth at the beginning, looks to be riding it smooth again in run two so look for more tricks I'm not sure where he's gonna try to squeeze them in though Wow look at that exposure oh so either not getting blown by the wind there or just handling it like a champ he's looking like on pace to be as smooth as run number one but he needs to do this 360 again this is where he's really gonna be focusing right here on his speed coming into this drop because it's very tall but the gap is very short Carson Storch working his way through the course Another 360. Oh, so consistent. This kid, 
He is here to stay when it comes to Rampage competition. Even more amplitude on the hip this time around, showing how incredibly consistent he is. Now, this is an invite-only event, and there's not very many slope-style competitors who are invited to this thing. Only the most well-rounded individuals and Carson Storch proving that's exactly what he is. Oh, coming up way short on that. I have a feeling it's due to the wind. He got blown to the side a little bit, hung up there. But thank goodness he's got that amazing run one score yep. in the bag. So Carson Storch making his way to the bottom of the course. Two runs complete and a sense of relief as he looks to the sky. The 23-year-old out of Bend, Oregon. His day is done, and I agree with you, Cam. He's probably going to stick with that first run score of 79. I'm just so impressed that he decided to drop in for a second run with how flawless his run one was. Doing this 360 twice in one day, definitely the biggest move he's ever done in his life. And now he's done it twice in the span of one afternoon. So this 360 down here is the reason why he won't improve on his score. I can only imagine with that slide out there, definitely due to the wind, nothing really that he could have done about that. And a score for Carson comes in as a 72-6-6, so he will, in fact, hold on to that first run score of 79. Well, some breaking news that we're hearing that Kurt Sorge, the defending champion, has not made his way back to the top of the course. I don't know if it's conditions or just watching Aggie go down, but he is done. And Zink has hurt his wrist in that 360 drop that we saw earlier. He's unable to grip the bar, so he has opted not to take the second run as well. So that means Brandon Semenuk, the current leader with the 84-33, is the next man to drop in if, in fact, he goes. So an interesting scenario he's found himself in. He's the guy to beat, and he's up there to drop next. Usually you have the leader going last, but right now your start order is to turn by what number plate you pull and where you're dropping in on the hill. So right now the flags are waving and keep in mind you do have that option of going to the back of the line if the conditions aren't up to your liking. Will the current leader take his second run? We'll find out in a moment. This is the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to beautiful Virgin, Utah. This is the Red Bull Signature Series and you're watching Rampage. Well, the wind's certainly a factor at Rampage this year, and the current leader, Brandon Semenuk, he has decided to pass for now. Smart strategy? I think it's a really smart strategy. He's obviously a smart competitor. He's won the event before. He knows what it takes. And I'm not going to suggest that he's doing this out of strategy because those flags are legitimately waving very fast, and it looks like Antoine Bazette is going to opt to do the same thing, go to the back of the lineup. So positions one and two go to the back of the line as you continue to see the wind blowing here in Virgin, Utah. One man that is going to take a chance and go, and this is Thomas Janon of Belgium. Had a 77.66 on run number one. Well, this is the same situation he was in before, too. A rider decides to go to the back of the pack, and then he decides to drop. Looks like he's definitely got the head game for Rampage. No big surprise that he was invited back after his great performance last year. Now, no downhill racing background that anybody is aware of with Thomas Janon, but he did start racing cross-country mountain bikes, so maybe that's where he found out, you know, how to control this bike at speed, but to Oof. adapt it to exposed areas coming from Belgium. Let's just take a moment to appreciate the speed from this slopestyle specialist. Now, this rhythm section on the middle ridge right here, he had a 360 drop in run one, and he stomps it clean again in run two. Now he had that big 360 flat spin table on the bottom. Will he try to improve on that or try the same thing? We're about to find out. There it is again, same amount of extension. Oh! oh! But this time getting blown off track. Hopefully he's all right. So Janone immediately to his feet. He was within 100 meters of getting to the finish line. He added that suicide no-hander up on the top of the course. Like we said before, the judges love it when you trick high up in a very crux feature on the course. Now this 360 flat spin tabletop right here. Oh, wow, his tires just got kicked out from underneath him. So when he landed, he touched down. There was no ability to get that traction. I'm going to chalk that one up to the wind. So Janome will hold on to run number one score of 77.66. Remember, the mark to beat is an 84.33 put up by Canada's Brandon Semenuk. And there is the leaderboard with Semenuk on the right and Antoine Bazette on the left. They have decided to pass for the time being because of the win. 
You can't fault them for that because it is very treacherous. And you factor in Mother Nature and what she can do? Well, Kyle Strait says, I'm going to give it a run. His first run score is 78.33, and here he goes getting set for run two. Well, I'll tell you why I'm really excited for this one. It's because his first run was definitely on par to knock Brandon out of that top spot. If he can add some more tricks to this run, definitely expect it to shake things up. Now, Kyle Strait bringing that World Cup downhill racing background, mixing it with his slope style career, making him one of the most successful Rampage athletes in the history of the event. Can he potentially win for the third time here? You see that dust definitely getting blown by the wind right there. So I know he's probably fighting to keep his bike on track. He's got the biggest drop in his line coming up. And he gets that classic suicide no-hander, a trick he used to win the prior two times that he's taken the top spot at this event. Let's see if he flips this step down again. He does. Can he pull it smooth? Oh, he's squirreling out. And Kyle straight so close to a fantastic run. Oh, uh, it was so close. And that was 100% exactly what we're looking for when it comes to a run that could potentially beat Brandon Semenuk and had this suicide no-hander landing even smoother than his first run when he straight aired it. Watch those handlebars go sideways, but he grabs them, pulls them right back to center. But it was all about this backflip step down right here. That was what gave him the high score in run one, but landing low, pulling the foot off and just not being able to hold it together. So Kyle will have to stay with run number one and he's still putting on a show for the fans here in Virgin. <laughs> Look at that, such a showman. Man, if he could have only held on to that backflip right there. So just two riders to go in the competition. Will they or won't they? Mother Nature will have the final word. And with that, we check in with Sal Masakela. Thank you, Todd. Can anybody top Brandon Semenuk? After a few years of disappointment, he wants to return to the top of the podium. One rider to go to find out his name, Antoine Bazette, and he wants to deliver an even stronger second run. Who's going to be our 2016 Rampage champion? We'll find out when we return here from Rampage near Zion National Park in southern Utah. Oh, this is the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to Virgin, Utah. This is the Red Bull Signature Series, and you're watching Rampage. Todd Harris, Cam McCall, and it all comes down to this. Antoine Bazet is the only man that can unseat that man, Brandon Semenuk, and is 84.33. But Mother Nature has been whipping up the winds, and a lot of athletes have opted not to take their second run. But it looks like Antoine's going to give it a go. It all comes down to this, and Brandon has been dodging a lot of bullets. But right now, this is a powerful bullet in the form of Antoine Bazet. We saw him do that double backflip in run one. He could add some more to that run, but he's going to have to stomp that double backflip again. Loving that onboard view right there. Look how much exposure to the sides. You can almost hear him breathing, just focusing on the task ahead of himself. Now he's peeling off rider's left into this middle ridge. This middle ridge is basically a rhythm section right here. You have to be 100% on point with your speed and timing. He's got that backflip again, landing it smooth yet again. So right now this run is completely on par to his first run. Through the whoop section, what will he add and will he get that double backflip? Coming into the jump, there we go. We had a suicide no-hander this run, didn't have it last run. Does he get the double? Just a single, single this time. Well, he flips the step down after, but Todd, I gotta believe without Ooh. that double backflip, I don't know if it has what it takes to beat Brandon's spotless run. He needed an 84.33. Just surviving this course is amazing. But as you pointed out, the judge is very tight on what they give points for. And it was beautiful, but was it enough to top the 84.33? You know, he's trying to polish something that's all, already very, very shiny. So to do that, he did that suicide no-hander. He needed that double backflip, though. And if he could have linked that double flip to this step-down flip, then we'd be in a situation where we'd have some decision-making on our hands. Waiting for the score to come in for Antoine Bazette. Will Brandon Semenuk have to take a second run for the win, or will he stand? And it does stand. He gets a 78, does Bazette, which means Brandon Semenuk is your winner at Rampage. Wow, man. To do it at 17 was an amazing feat, but to come back eight years later and do it again, joining a club of only a couple people who've ever won twice, very impressive. But to all these guys who stomped their runs, that is the main goal out here, and the score is secondary. 
Of all the unthinkable feats achieved here at Rampage since its inception in 2001, a double backflip had never been attempted. In 2015, Antoine Bazet used one of the pre-built wood lips to go for the unimaginable. It would cost him what could have been a winning run, as well as a broken arm. After a long recovery, Bazet would patiently wait for his chance at redemption. However, this year, with no wooden features, he would have to do his biggest move on a much less predictable natural dirt lift. That didn't stop him. And today, Antoine Bazet became the first to ever land a double backflip in Rampage's 11 event history. A massive congratulations to Antoine Bazet in making the impossible possible and receiving today's Red Bull signature moment. But the man who becomes a two-time champion is Brandon Semenuk, and he's standing by with Tina Dixon. Yes, Brandon now joins that very small group of two-time winners. Congratulations on that. In fact, the first time you won, you were 17 years old. It was back in 2008. What does it mean now to finally be back on the podium? I mean, yeah, it's, it's crazy. I'm so excited. Um, obviously, eight years is a long time from uh, getting that top spot. But uh, yeah, this one just came together great. Like, was really excited about my line and my first run went how I wanted and I mean, it stood up. So now we're here and yeah, it's so stoked. You know, I got a chance to walk up to that first drop and my heart went through my chest and I was talking to your digger and he's like, yeah, that was pretty much how my whole last week was. How did you piece together your run with all this exposure? Honestly, uh, I found a couple things like lower down on the hill that I really liked and then when we got up to the top, it was, that was kind of like what funneled us in there. And I was a little concerned about that top thing, but once, you know, my builders tackled it, it looked so good and it rode good, made it happen. Uh, those guys killed it so hard. So, I mean, I can't thank them enough because they're, you know, just, just as much a part of me being successful today. Yeah, and you put your hands down on the dirt too, working with them and you did it today. Congratulations, Brandon. Thank you. All right, guys. And thank you very much, Tina. As we take a look at the final results, Cam, you got to be proud of your younger brother. Tyler finishes in seventh. Thomas Janone finishes in sixth place. And Kyle Strait, what could have been a tremendous run, he is in fifth. Kurt Sorge, the defending champion, finishes in fourth. Yeah, let's talk about the podium, though. So happy for this kid. Carson Storch in third. Antoine Bizet with that double flip in second. And Brandon Semnuk taking away his second win. So that will bring the 11th edition of Red Bull Rampage to a conclusion. And Cam, just when we think we've seen the very best, these guys top it. It's so crazy. It keeps getting better every single year. And just imagine that 10 days ago, it was 100% impossible to ride from top to bottom of this mountain. How about for Brandon Semenuk? What an ending to his year after the disappointment he had at Joyride. After the struggles there in Whistler, he needed something to cap off this season. And what better way than joining the exclusive club of two-time champions out here in the desert? Once again, an amazing show. That'll do it from Virgin, Utah. For now, we send it back to the studio and Sal Masakela. Thank you, Todd, and thank you guys for joining us here at Rampage near Zion National Park in southern Utah. Congratulations to Canadian Brandon Semenuk joining the Elite Two Win Club, standing on that podium again. Also, congratulations to the Frenchman Antoine Bazette and American Carson Storch for rounding out the podium. And of course, we wish Graham Agassi a speedy recovery. Once again, thank you for hanging out with us. On behalf of our entire NBC Sports crew, including Todd Harris, Cam McCall, Tina Dixon, and myself, we will see you next time.